What is up guys? Welcome to the channel. In this one I have with me this heavy thick chunk of glass which is the seven and a half millimeter per gear fish eye lens. We're going to take a deep dive on this and I'm going to give you my thoughts and show you how it performs. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this review. Now I do want to start with saying this is not a sponsored review. However, Pergear was nice enough to send me this lens so I can test it out and give you guys my honest opinions on it. So that is what you are going to get throughout this entire review. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and start with build quality. I've had a chance to play with a lot of per gear lenses as well as some uh, budget counterparts and per gear really does have the build quality down, I got to admit. This has a full metal encased body, even the lens hood is metal, which I should add. It's very, very small and honestly, I guess because of how wide the lens is, doesn't really provide that much protection against sun flares but I guess it does add a little bit of protection in case you get it close to a wall or a doorknob or anything like that. It'll probably end up hitting one of these fins versus the actual glass, or at least hopefully. But don't think that it'll do too much in terms of blocking out some flares because in my use with the lens, it really didn't do that. Now, staying on the exterior of the lens, let's talk about the aperture ring. It is de-clicked, and as you can see, it has some ridges to it. This is honestly something I'm not a fan of. I find it actually quite uncomfortable to grab and move, but I guess what they might have been going for was just a very quick and easy way to distinguish what is your focus and what is your aperture. That's the only thing that I can kind of think of which would make them change up the design of something like this. However, I prefer the more traditional design just like it is on the focus uh, ring. Despite those ridges though, one thing I did notice is the aperture ring seems to have a lot more drag than your focus. So your focus is a little smoother and easier to pull and turn versus your aperture. There seems to be just a little bit more drag which requires you to actually move it or use a little bit more force to get the aperture that you want. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think it's kind of odd that they're different but I feel like I would have actually preferred it the other way because what I found is usually using lenses like this that are fully manual on crop sensor cameras or just mirrorless in general, it seems to have, or I seem to have, a difficult time getting and nailing the focus every single time. Whereas I feel if there was a little bit more drag like you do have here on the aperture ring, but on your focus ring, it would provide just a little bit more precise movement and uh, be able to allow you to focus a little bit easier. I've also heard some other people kind of complain about the same thing. So maybe that is a improvement they could make in a Mark II version later on down the road. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention because all the other budget lenses that I've actually used, the drag seems to be exactly the same when it comes to the aperture and the focus ring, except that's not the case here. Now this lens comes in at only $129. And honestly, I think for that money, this is a very, very good deal. Here on the front element, that huge bubble of glass, you can see there are a few coatings which will help alleviate some weird chromatic aberrations that you may encounter, as well as some flares. But I did notice, like I mentioned earlier, that even though it has a little bit of a lens hood, uh, just given the fact that the glass is so exposed and it's so curved, you are still going to get some lens flares. Now, as I was out testing this lens, I did post a few sneak peeks on my Instagram, and a few of you asked how this would perform as a vlogging lens. And here is a clip to kind of give you an idea. So this is how it would look if you were to use this in a vlogging format. As you can see, the lens is extremely wide. You can kind of see everything going on in the office today. It's quite a mess, but just to kind of give you an idea, another thing, you could pull it in a little bit closer, but you can see that now I'm no longer in focus simply because uh, one, I'm shooting at f2.8, and two, this is a manual focus lens, so you may need to just kind of adjust a little bit here to get a better focus. I think this is still something that's 
was doable. However, with those nuances of it not being autofocus, it could pose as an issue later on down the road. But for a budget wide angle lens, I think this is a very good choice. All right, guys, let's jump into the nitty gritty. That is the image quality and what we can actually pull out of this. Now, given the fact that this is an f2.8, that was one of the biggest selling points for me that I was extremely interested in trying because one, relatively it lets in a good amount of light for average shooting, but I also wanted to see the bokeh that this would produce. Now, it's not necessarily a lens you would go shoot portraits with, even though you could, and honestly, you probably could get some really interesting results, but just to kind of give you an idea of how this would render some bokeh, here are a couple of sample shots that I shot at f2.8. I was able to get the center of focus pretty close to the lens, simply just because the fact that it is a wide-angle lens, your minimum focus distance is quite short. Now, I really did think this was extremely sharp here in the center, even at f2.8. As you can see here, I'll zoom in, this is f2.8, and I think it is fantastically sharp for being wide open. The sharpness actually surprised me just because on budget lenses that I've used like this from other brands in the past, as soon as you have it wide open, the image really does get significantly soft and honestly almost not even usable for me. However, this seemed to be extremely sharp even at f2.8. And then obviously as you go a little bit higher, it gets exponentially sharper. At around 3.2, I noticed a huge difference from 2.8 to 3.2. And here is a shot that I shot at 3.2, just to kind of give you an idea in comparison to f2.8. You can see they're both very, very sharp, but there is just a subtle difference as far as sharpness goes when you kind of start bumping up your f-stop. And of course it gets even sharper Along, along the edges when you get up to about 5.6 and above. Here are a few photos that I shot of the sky just to kind of give you an idea of how the lens would render some flares. And also I wanted to show you how contrasty this lens is and it really does pull out some deep colors. This is right out of camera. I shot this on the Fujifilm X-T4 in a really flat profile. So the fact that these colors are so vibrant and popping so much really does show you how much contrast and pop and color you can get from this lens right out of camera. Now let's take a look at some of the edges of these photos. You can see that when it's stopped down to about f2.8, you are gonna obviously get some softer edges. That's inevitable, especially something at this price point of only 129, you are gonna have to sacrifice your image quality in one way or another. Now with that said, I still think at this price point, you don't really get that bad of a result, even stopping down at f2.8. Sure, the edges are a little bit soft, but as you can still see here, there's a lot of detail retained, and there's really not that much distortion either. Now, if we stop up to about an f5.6, you can see here on the edges, we are still retaining a lot of detail, but everything gets a little bit sharper, not only on the edges, but across the entire frame. Now, despite how wide it is, I am really curious to see how this would perform with portraits so I will definitely be doing a photo shoot with uh, with this lens to kind of get some really interesting portraits I think it'd be really cool to get uh, quite a very wide angle obviously but some unique angles that you can capture with a lens like this instead of something as tight as a 50 for example now with that said I think this is a fantastic lens especially at this price point and you guys can see, I mean, the image quality is actually really, really good for what it is. And for those just looking for a wide angle fisheye lens on a budget, I think this is absolutely fantastic to introduce you in to the whole wide angle world. This is something that I would definitely take on shoots, especially if I'm shooting something like real estate, you can still get some really fantastic images out of this. And Honestly, when you're shooting that kind of stuff, you usually have it stopped to about f5.6 anyways, so you are going to naturally just get a significantly sharper shot than shooting this wide open at f2.8. Well guys, that is gonna wrap up this review here of the Pergear 7.5 millimeter f2.8 wide lens. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below, and I will go ahead and answer them for you. If you're interested in purchasing this lens, I'll also go ahead and 
and put a link down below for you to check that out. As always, thanks for watching, and if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It really does help the channel continue to grow. And with that said, guys, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.